Hey, what's up? We're here with a new segment called Weird News. I'm Charlie Yenum, your main, your main man with the plan. This is Albert. What's up? This is Derek. What's up? And I just want to talk about, you know, Facebook. You may have a problem when your most recent Facebook status is about to go to jail. Well, in this, in this case, these two teens who were arrested last Friday morning for breaking into CNN offices to check their Facebooks. If not jail time, Aldon Farrow on 18 and Francis Matimwa 17 definitely need to attend some Facebook rehab with Dr. Drew. You know, you know, they probably should. What do you think about that? I don't know. I mean, why break into CNN of all places? Like, why not a bank or, yeah. I don't know, something useful? Exactly. <laughs> the two teens allegedly climbed over a ledge, like from the neighboring Omni Hotel, and worked their way up to the fifth floor. And then they start checking their Facebooks on CNN, like in the CNN newsroom. When they, were arrest when they were arrested, the authorities said that they're just checking their Facebooks, doing their own little thing. I'm surprised they couldn't go to a dealer or something on the street selling some computer time, you know? Is that the hot thing in the hood nowadays, to sell some computer time? I just, uh, one, I have not seen a cyber cafe since like 2001. <laughs> so you're probably not gonna find a cyber cafe anywhere. Two, don't these just have phones? They could have had phones, and even then, Facebook oh, is not that big. The one anymore. thing is, like, like one of the teens had like a Mercedes, like a, like one of the brand new Mercedes, and, like, and they don't have an iPhone or anything. But I think it's just the generation now. These kids are just getting stupid, and like, you know, oh, I robbed this house. Check out my new swag that I just stole from this house and post it on Facebook. Yeah, you know, that's smart. I think. I mean, no, that's no, I mean, actually no. It's not. It's not smart at yeah. all. The one thing I'm most surprised about is that CNN didn't even cover the story. And I'm betting that people have probably broken in before, and they're probably still working there right now at CNN. You know, Anderson Cooper. <laughs> hey, who's Bob over here? Oh, Bob, yeah, he broke in like two weeks ago. We just, we just keep him on payroll. So. You know, they're, Bob's a cool guy. Yeah. They're currently uh, being charged for criminal trespassing and being held for $500. The police are still unsure why they broke into the offices. They may be like Facebook fiends and have internet addiction disorder, or they could be sober prote protesters occupying CNN, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah. if, it, if it's Facebook, like, I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> this is just such a ridiculous this story. Is too, These two kids yeah. are obviously have some serious problems. Yes. Facebook is the last thing that they should be looking at on the internet. They should be Googling like mental health disorders. <laughs> Maybe they should be that. studying or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Open up a real book. In Facebook. Okay, with Facebook. Anyway. In the next story, well, a white girl finds some white and gives a new meaning to cracking open a book and getting your head into your studies. College junior Sophia Stockton purchased a book that had a small item in it that was worth more than the book itself. The Understanding Terrorism Challenges, Perspective, and Issues textbook contained a bag of co cocaine that was worth $400. I guess the previous owner of the book really needed a little sum sum to cram for finals, you know? Man, that's crazy. I did not know Charlie Sheen went back to school <laughs> and stole his books. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Why would you keep cocaine in a book at a library, though? Well, I mean, it's a pretty safe place. I mean, it's oh, no. the last place cops would look. The girl got it from Amazon.com, so oh. she ordered oh. it, yeah. That's well, now they... I know where to get my cocaine on <laughs> Amazon.com. And you know, she can now be reading it line for line, you know? Like, uh, line <laughs> for line, you know what I'm saying? I see what you did there. Uh, we're, that is we're good. smart people over here. <laughs> she, maybe she's reading between the lines? <laughs> ah, that was funnier when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as funny. Well, she took, the, she took the book to the local police, and they examined it to confirm that it was cocaine. The officer took it back for 10 minutes, then came back and said, uh, to the girl, did you happen to order some cocaine with a textbook? <laughs> Does he really think that she just placed the order for cocaine in the textbook? You know, I'm pretty sure with all the crazy options they add now on Amazon, <laughs> uh, mi she might have accidentally checked, oh, I do not want to receive newsletters. Would I like a free bag of coke? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, this comes with it. Just, you know. You know, maybe the prices are down. They're just trying to give it away nowadays. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I should talk about something else before I get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> Please mm. don't sue us, FCC. And speaking of, speaking of social networks and terrorism, America's biggest threat could possibly be a tweet. If you feel like nobody's reading your tweets 
or nobody's following you? Well, the government's following you. Not retweeting, but more retracting. According to local United Kingdom tabloids, 26, uh, tw not 26, <laughs> 20, <laughs> 26 year old Lay Van Bryan and 24 year old Emmy Bl Emily Blunton were kicked out of the United States before their vacation even started, but for being suspected Twitter terrorists. You know, you ever heard of those? Oh, uh, I actually heard about this story. It's ridiculous. Like, you know, going to USA, gonna blow it up, LOL. Hashtag <laughs> death to America. <laughs> she actually <laughs> said, free this, uh, free this week for quick gossip. Prep before I go destroy America. Like, I'm just thinking, you know. Yeah, you know. The, they, they, are, they honestly think that this is a threat to national security, a, a tweet. Lindsay Lohan on Twitter is more of a threat to national security than this. Uh, why? This, <laughs> the, I almost feel bad for them. I, I really kind of feel bad for this family. Almost. Uh, almost, almost feel bad for them because, you know, Twitter is a serious thing. It really is. It's, it's serious? Yeah. Well, no. You know, I take that back. That's <laughs> my sarcasm. Mike, Mike Tyson apart. talking about meditating is serious? That's, that's, that's grave danger. As long as he's not biting any more ears, I think we'll be all, be all right. Or getting more face tattoos. Or being on the hanger over anymore. He doesn't need to be on that. But also, uh, destroy, she said to the Homeland Security agents, is British slang for party. Well, if I said I was going to take out the president, and does that mean that I'm trying to dance with a very important person? No. Destroy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a strong word. Maybe wreck. I'm pretty sure I could take I'm Obama on in a fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Also, the DHS searched <laughs> Brian for shovels and spades because they claimed that Miss Bunting was planning to do some digging after tweeting, three weeks today, totally peeing, people off on Hollywood Boulevard and digging Marilyn Monroe up. Really, I think these girls <laughs> kind of just have a party problem and they're only threats to the toilet bowl after the party's over. Well, <laughs> digging. I didn't know we took things so literally in this country anymore. Yeah. That is, wow. I don't even, I don't even have a stupid joke for that. <laughs> I don't. You're getting serious now. I am getting I, serious. What it just got real. <laughs> it just got real. It just got real. I guess, I guess the DHS agents didn't feel the same way after confiscating their passports, questioning them for five hours, and locking them up overnight with other illegal immigrants. Once morning came, Bunting and Brian were put on a flight home, and they're uncertain if they can, if they're banned from the United States. So, for all my fans out there tweeting that they're about to explode with laughter because they think my show is the bomb, just wait a little bit. Wait a little bit before you do that. Because I'm trying to keep my job. <laughs> I probably won't after this show anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> and the next story, the NBC show Fear Factor is in the news recently for possibly going a little too far on the challenges. Like, guys, they don't, they, they went too a little far. too far. Like, this show too is Too far for Fear Factor. Yeah, like they make a living off like they make a living off making people eat roaches. Yeah, eat animal penises, putting cow hearts in their mouth and putting in buckets in previous shows. Now the show's producers are now receiving some backlash for making the contestants drink a glass of donkey semen. That's for real though, right? Can, yep. Can you, can you say that again? Yeah, they made the contestants Drink some donkey semen. And like, like the contestants, they went on TMZ, they tried to talk about this. Like, they're actually defending the act. Like, yeah, it's so good. Cool. Drink some donkey semen. Like, 15 minutes of fame. No, like, man. Like, wow. The, the episode was originally aired, supposed to air January 30th. However, the American Donkey and Mule Society launched a protest. <laughs> 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 you no. I, Did you make that is, up? This is why I love everything that you pull up, man. They're American Donkey and Mule Society. Uh, you, made, you made that up, right? No, no, that's real. That's this real. Is real. Yes, that's Holy. real. If you're watching this on YouTube, wow. Like post, you have got to Google this because I'm gonna Google this as soon as as soon as we're done here. Because if this is a real thing, that's gotta be absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Peter's cool and everything, but American. Donkey and Mule Society. That's just ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And, and well, it, what's even worse is that, I'm not going to say that drinking semen was that bad, because they've done some pretty messed up stuff on that show. 
However, defending your action and still losing the competition, that's when you probably need to say, you know what? Maybe. I got I got to sue Fear Factor for something, <laughs> all right? They made me drink donkey semen. I got to get something out of this. And Wait, they're not, not protein. Trying. He, the weird thing is, they're not planning on suing them. Like, the show was planning on suing them, the contestants, for talking on TMZ because they don't mm. want to like they don't want them like to talk about the episode because the the protesters are are angry at them in the first place. The executives, you know, Fear Factor really tried to make a comeback, but I guess they're really making a comeback. You know. So. How how did this even get through the pre-production <laughs> phase? Did someone just go up? to the executives and like, we want our contestants to drink donkey semen. <laughs> and the executive was just like, that's a great idea. I'm just wondering, where you know, did they get the donkey from? And why are you, how did they get the, the semen? You know what I'm talking about? Well, that's a sticky situation. And that's a story for another time. I'm Charlie Enum, and we'll be back after this break. There's nothing quite like a hot, home-cooked meal. But it's something many of us take for granted. For some Hayes County residents, hunger is a real problem. 40% of Central Texans can't afford the basic necessities of life, including food. For these people, a home-cooked meal isn't an option. But there's a way you can help. The Hayes County Food Bank accepts donations from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every Monday through Friday. The food bank gives food directly to those in need throughout Hayes County. Donate today. You never know who might need it. The Hayes County Food Bank is located at 220 Herndon Street. For more information, visit HayesFoodBank.org.